well. My original plan for this video was to make this costume, but upon doing research into this style of clothing, I began to feel uncomfortable by its origins. The harem pants were inspired by the Orientalism movement that took hold of the Western world in the early 20th century, all the way through really the 1930s. And there was almost a gross fascination with the exoticness of the East at that time that just didn't sit right with me. And I'm sad because I spent months gathering these fabrics. I started gathering these fabrics in March. And honestly, this costume idea popped in my head over a year ago, but I just feel like no costume idea is ever too good to hurt others, even if it's unintentional. So now because the video title for the Costume Symposium had to be submitted a month in advance, I'm stuck with the title that I gave them. Now I have only a couple of weeks to go to thrift stores and find the materials and figure out the costume that I'm going to use and actually make it and edit the video in time for the Costume Symposium. So it, you know, it's just even more of a challenge now, but I know this is the right call. Day two of me going to thrift stores on my lunch break to try to find fabric um, and success. I picked this up, which I thought would work really well for this outfit, but then, guys, a set of striped sheets. I know what I'm gonna make. I just have to now find the pattern and buy the pattern and get the pattern and, but we have our new thing. Now I've got the sheets. I have a fitted sheet and a regular sheet. I am super impressed with Truly Victorian. I swear I ordered these and then two days later they came in the mail. So now we can get started with that. I have about two weeks to make this and edit the video. And I know that people do that all the time. Like Rachel Maxey, she makes an entire video in one week, but I have a regular person job. And I also just got cast in a show, so we're about to start rehearsals for that. So, oh, it's gonna be tight, but we can do it. So we have the pattern, we have the fabric, and I went through my stash and I found this collar. Oh, I should tell you what costume I'm making. I mean, you may have figured it out, but it's this costume from season one of Downton Abbey. This collar isn't exactly right, but I'm working on a time crunch and I'm trying to do it with thrifted material. Um, I actually found this at an antique mall. I think maybe I paid $5 for it. And forgive me, but this is not thrifted. Um, but I have these two little lace scraps that I'm going to use uh, from my stash. But I think I need to tea stain it so that I can match the collar better. So now I have a whole bunch of work to do. T minus two weeks until this video has to go up. Well, after tea staining, the lace just kind of looks dirty. I think it's just a little too brown compared to the collar. This is why you should always test before you dip both in. I think I'm gonna try to find new lace. So much for thrifted materials, huh? In the meantime, I'm just gonna cut out the pattern and work on the dress. First things first, this blouse pattern. It's not quite right. So I've been trying to work out the back first. Basically the back has a panel very similar to the front, um, but I don't want that panel back there. So I'm just gonna cut out the front and the back, 
out of this scrap sheet that I have here. We'll figure out what we need to do to make this look more like the show. Well, after trying on the mock-up, I realized it wasn't the right shape at all. So I'm back to square one on that. So in case we're keeping track at home, so far today, I've ruined the lace I was going to use and I've wasted my time making a mock-up of a bodice I'm not even going to use. So I've literally done nothing on the dress so far. So I'm gonna cut out the skirt. The skirt is the exact shape I want so I can at least do that. The skirt is basically pieced together at this point. I'm gonna to have to do a whole lot more work on it, but I want to get this bodice drafted out because the closure on it is very interesting. The bodice has the buttons down the front, which at first I thought were decorative, but then I saw this picture and it gives me a clear view of how this dress closes. So the buttons are the closure on this bodice and then the skirt closes on the side. So I'm not quite too sure how this is going to sew together. But first, I have to draft this dang bodice pattern. And I'm really nervous about it. There's a lot of things that I've never done before. So the things that didn't work for me with this pattern, um, it's too blousey, so I need to make it tighter. The insert needs to be more square instead of triangular. And then of course the back is completely wrong. I have no idea how I'm gonna do this, um, but I have my pattern paper and I'm just gonna play around until I figure out what works. So now that I have my ridiculously odd shaped blouse pieces cut out, I'm basically mostly gonna follow the instructions from the Truly Victorian pattern because I think it's gonna be similar on how to construct it and I'm not quite too sure how to do it. So it'll be nice to follow instructions. I lied. I'm not using these instructions at all. Well, I started using the instructions. First of all, I sewed the back together because it needed to be sewed together. The chevrons aren't perfect, but you know what? I want to see someone come at me for my imperfect chevrons. I'm working hard on this, okay? The instructions said to fold the front edge 
one inch to the wrong side. I did that and then it said to top stitch. I'm like, I don't want to top stitch. So I hand sewed it into place and actually because the back is on a bias, it works as its own bias tape. And so I was able to actually just fold under the neckline and finish it all the way. So now I'm gonna sew up the side seam and underarm seam. And then I guess we'll work on the square bit in the front. It is now Saturday. My video has to go up on Friday, so uh, about a week. Um, I have set aside all day today to work on this. Hopefully I can get the majority of it done. Um, so I have, basically I've pinned the panel in place where I want it and I'm gonna, I haven't decided. Do I want to hand sew it or do I just want to top stitch it? If I top stitch it, I think I need to top stitch all the way around so it doesn't look weird, but I don't want to do that. I think I will hand sew it. So I'm going to hand sew this down and then I will figure out how much I need to overlap in the front and then I can also sew these edges down. While I have this on, I think I'm going to mark out where my waist is so I can trim down the back here. I will check in afterwards once I get all of that accomplished. Now I need to sew on the lace. And while I was looking for replacement lace for this tea stained lace that I didn't end up liking, I actually ended up finding a collar that matched it perfectly. So now it doesn't look dirty, it just looks like it matches the collar. We are getting somewhere. I just have the skirt basted on for now because I wanted to work on the closure, but I needed to figure out how it was gonna work first. I think I know what I'm going to do for this closure. Um, I added some interfacing here to the front panel to give it some stability and I think that's what I'm going to end up doing down here. I'm going to unpick this top stitching and add it in between that layer and then I'm going to extend this panel out to the end of here and add some interfacing in there for the hooks and eyes or snaps or whatever I end up doing. Interfacing. It's looking like a thing! I'm so excited! What I ended up having to do, and this is just based it in for now, so don't pay attention to the wobbly, wonky seam at the back, but what I ended up having to do is I ended up having to gather the back a little bit, which is not screen accurate, but this dress isn't screen accurate, so it's, it's a costume based on the Downton Abbey costume, inspired by the Downton Abbey costume. It is 418, so maybe we can get it done tonight. Oh, that is ambitious. I'm gonna say we will get it done tomorrow. Ooh, we could get it done tomorrow and then I could have a, oh, that would be wonderful. Let's, let's not get our hopes up though. Anyway, I'm gonna keep working. It's done! The buttons were actually really kind of hard for me to figure out because if you look at the picture, the buttons are in the middle. But if you do it like normal buttons, they would have to be on the side of the placket, at least one side or the other. So I was trying to figure out how the buttons could be in the middle if they were actual working buttons. So then I had an epiphany. 
I thought, what if I placed the buttons on the edge of the upper side of the placket and then put the button loops in the middle of the lace on the lower placket? Therefore, the loops, since they're loose, can still go over the buttons and then it will close nice and tight and the buttons could be placed on the edge and therefore look like they're in the middle of the placket. And it worked beautifully. This is probably my favorite thing I did with this dress. And then all I had left to do was the sleeves. Looking at this picture, it looks like the cuffs are folded back over the sleeve. So what I ended up doing was cutting off the excess of the sleeve that I had and then using that as a guide for how long I wanted the cuff to be. So after a little bit of trial and error, I ended up sewing the cuff wrong side to right side and then folding it back over and hand sewing it down to that seam line so when i fold the cuff up all of the seams are hidden within the interior of the cuff i have to admit something i was contemplating not making youtube videos anymore i had gotten so caught up in how many followers i have and how well my videos were doing and that's not why I started. I started because I wanted a reason to sew and I wanted a reason to keep growing. This dress was hard. This dress pushed me to my limits, trying to find the fabric, trying to create the pattern. Like it was all very stressful, but this video pushed me to keep going. Like I had to do it because I was making a video. This dress probably would have gone into the UFO pile pretty immediately if I didn't have to make this video. I'm really proud of it. I've learned so much making this dress and that's why I do it. That's why I'm making costumes is to learn. My videos may only get like 300 views a video and I don't have a lot of followers, but that's not why I do it. I do it because things like this make me very, very proud of myself. Now let's get to the reveal. Thank you.